In this season of The Naked CEO, Alex Malley opens the door to super brands and global giants. As my mentor, he's invited me along to find out what makes a great leader. So, pull up a chair. I had no idea what was going on this morning when Alex picked me up in a 1960s combi. But after I convinced him to let me drive, he assured me that we're off to meet someone who would be very impressed with our choice of ride. You got insurance? <laughs> Woo! Careful, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Where exactly are we going today? We're going to Bondi Beach. And you're going to meet someone I actually think you'll like a lot and who you may, in some strange way, have been connected to in the past. The era was the 1960s, and John Anderson was just 22. With a dream to travel Europe, but only 25 pounds in his pocket, John sought out other travellers to share the cost, and in doing so, the iconic Kentucky brand was born. The amazing story is chronicled in his book, Only Two Seats Left. As one of the world's leading tour operators, Kentucky remains a rite of passage for the 18 to 35 market. By the time John sold the company, it employed more than 700 staff, and over 2 million young people had enjoyed the Kentucky experience. Today, the Kentucky founder has a new travel venture, targeting the 45 to 65 demographic proving his entrepreneurial spirit still looms large. Guys, only two seats left. John, great to see you again. Oh, Alex, I love the combi. Oh, look, I thought you might have been memories, I tell you. Absolutely. <laughs> I should introduce you to Adam. John Anderson. Hello, and Adam. Our student you? diarist. From uh, Kentucky, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I used to work for you guys uh, about five years ago. Oh, not with that beard you did. I love the story of Kentucky and how you started out. Can you explain this idea of... Two seats left. I arrived in London with no money and I wanted to see Europe. And I thought, why don't I put an itinerary together of all the places I wanted to go to, get a group of other young people together, and we camp to save on accommodation. There was a, an overseas visitors club in London, and I put up a notice on the board of the club and said, um, small group of young people traveling around Europe camping, 12 weeks, 15 countries, cost, 100 pounds, food kitty 25 shillings a week extra, and then I have the cheek to say only two seats left. You know, entrepreneurship has a relatively romantic notion, but there's a lot of hard work in it, isn't there? Being an entrepreneur it gives you the ability to be in control of your own destiny. So you create the ideas and make things happen rather than somebody tell you what to do. John, one of the key messages, of course, in leadership and running a business or running your own business is this whole issue about instinct. It's sort of a gut feel. So you have an idea and you sort of weigh up the pros and cons. But you've got to have put your foot in the water mm. to actually have tested whether that gut feels worth further pursuit. Yeah, uh, you're right. I, I, I like to say, give things a go. And if it doesn't work out, Adam, you can always pick yourself up and try again. And when you look back on, on my background, I almost made as many mistakes as I did the right decisions. What sorts of risks did you face and the sorts of scenarios that you had to learn to build into managing your business? You never know what's round the corner, both personally or in business. And we, had a, we used to have contingency plans because when you've got a coaching operation like we've, that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at any point of time, something can happen to that vehicle, something can happen to the passengers, so you've got to be prepared for the unexpected. Over the last 40 or so years, there's been a whole heap of tour operators that have popped up in Europe and all over the world, but Kentucky is probably the most recognisable and has stayed around for probably almost the longest time. Why do you think that is? That's a good question, Adam. Um, a brand. A brand is not just a name. Brands that have been around, like Kontiki, which has now been around for 50 years, have got a history, they've got a character, they've been through trial and error, but above all, the established brands people trust. And we always used to tell our young staff, you've got to protect this brand, enhance this brand, and never let any damage come to this brand, because that's where the value is. When you did decide to move on from Kentucky and sell out of the business, was it like uh, losing a child? How did, you, uh, how did you move on from that? I tell you, when I sold Kentucky, it's almost the toughest day of my life. And when I wrote the chapter in the book, 
that was I really struggled to. I love that company. I still love it. Whenever I see a Contiki coach pass me, anywhere on the street or on the highway, anywhere around the world, and I see that coach packed full of young people having fun, you know what? I always look up and I wave. I don't own the company, but I'm still there with them because I know that they're having an experience of a lifetime and I was part of creating that opportunity for them. That wonderful emotion you've just exhibited is so important for young people to see that passion is so at the core of life. Yeah, a, a good job is a job that you love. I love Kentucky. John, it's been great catching up, and, and I know this has been a thrill for Adam. Of course, with passion in your career and wisdom and hard work, you become an extraordinary judge of shirts. <laughs> so not only do I congratulate you on your shirt, <laughs> but on this spectacular career you've had and your generosity to catch up with Adam today. Thanks so much. OK, Alex, good. And all the best, Adam. Thank you very much. So that's series two, mate. What do you think? It's been pretty incredible, the people I've had the chance to meet. Yeah. Or we've had the chance to meet, I guess. I think I've probably matured a little. Well, when I think about that moment in our first episode when I went to give you a cheers with a glass <laughs> and you half drunk your drink, yeah. You know, I think you have. I think you have matured. Yeah. Hopefully you saw across many of the episodes that passion, courage, being willing to use your imagination. Take a few risks. Take a few risks. What happens if you make a mistake? Well, you learn from it. You get, get back up on the horse. And you get back on the horse. Yeah. I want to give you something. Because you are graduating, <laughs> I think this is just going to be a necessary part of the kit bag. Oh, really? Um, what have we got here? Ah! <laughs> you know you're going to need that. If you try hard enough, you can start to look like me. I do want you to be seen in the future. And I'll tell you what, I've got this great idea for a documentary. Uh, I knew you'd say this. What's it about? <laughs> Well, a young man follows a CEO. Well, guys, season two is over, but season three kicks off in the new year, and you don't want to miss this one. In the meantime, you'll find loads of awesome new content on our site, and you can still ask Alex the questions you want answered. Just head to thenakedceo.com. Bye for now.